Hey, so what's happening right now, man? Just the rug pull, man. First initial move, as you can see. Now we're having like I don't, I can't even. I'm sure what's not working my uh. Speaker. <laughs> but you don't want to be in a trade right now, regardless. Well, so sorry again for now just ignore spy i mean we're not trading this nobody should be trading this usually when powell is done we can see probably a continuation to this but um uh, right now it's not worth it <laughs> so i want to see what we have trade tesla again had a nice move earlier seemed to be in the same range and i gave you guys the range so you guys, if we break up, will be well. We're gonna retail resistance. That's what we did. So keep in mind that, uh, that's how ranges work, right? You can see how EMS are flat. When you see that to any any stock, you know that there's no direction. I mean, we knew that for days ago. Today was it's gonna be a day that we're now gonna be a direction overall. Just gonna be uh, waiting for Powell, as you guys can see. Media. Uh, I said earlier as well, we couldn't break that resistance. Um, so keep an eye on it. Seems to be that the market is not re reacting good, but I've seen worse. I mean, I definitely seen worse. I've seen, I've seen the market like like drop like it's doing right now and then spike all the way up. Um, I cannot hear. Wow, well, let me see if I can put it on my laptop. For some reason, my speaker is not working. So whatever. <laughs> Well, what do they do that he paused? So I think the market was expecting, I think the market was expecting a race. You know, we had already two pauses, right? We got two pauses. And I, even to me, man, I was kind of surprised that um we got a pause. Right, I think that the most like I think it was was gonna be a race. The market was pretty much uh trading on that fear, on that fear of a race, and I think that it should be technically good that he paused. But, uh, this is why you know we want to see what's gonna happen, like see what's gonna do. I mean, if you look on a bigger picture, it seems to be like a double top right now on the third minute. So things are not looking good. Like I say, you know, you can see sellers are buying pressure is almost gone. You can see that. So it's really here breaking the you know the important trend lines. So what I I do believe if spy really wants to break below, uh, it's gonna have to break this four nineteens. The twenty minutes of four nineteen point twenty five. If he breaks that, then the double top will come in play. And if the double top comes in play, then you're gonna see a retest of support. Uh, which you have support right now at the uh, where's for and check it out. What is this? Uh, yeah, 417 plus 67 is report. So that's that's what I'm looking. I mean, not right now, but when he's done, if he really market wants to sell off, the money breaks 419, their product gets some puts, and it's gonna be quick because if, if that happens, uh you gotta expect like a like a quick drop. I mean, it's definitely gonna drop those support. Then that's when you wanna look because if 
a spiral it wants to break below once it loses at 60 ma as you can see so that 417.56 which is aligning with the 200 ma as well so you have the 200 the 60 ma and support aligning to the same level and that is going to be a strong floor to break so a strong support but if it breaks then that's going to be very bad for spy i mean spy can easily sell off you know the 414 415 right so we're talking about four or five dollar drop if that happens right so i'm looking to that i mean if that really happens regardless if it doesn't and let's say the market wants to you know break off i wouldn't be bullish as long as we don't see you know 421's breaks previous high was 421.90 uh you do have what you got resistance at 422.19 so like I say, I'm not going to be, we're really close to the, you know, we're like an hour ish to the lower, to the bell. So is if trades are made now, like when he's done, it needs to be in a matter of minutes, right? Not more than five minutes straight. Because you are going to get eaten by Theta, right? So definitely, you know, it's not looking good for the bull so far. Quick update on our swings again. Uh, I hope most of you guys took some profits. MBOL, MBIO, uh, you were from the 130s, right? You should already be slugging some profits out. You know, you should be already 15 20% on this trade alone. Of course, I'm looking for higher numbers. I'm not expecting to this happen this week, honestly, you know, because we have so many things going on this week. I think that the flow, the money needs to flow in this in the small caps, right? I actually want to see a pullback. I would love to see a pullback to 130s. Right to I can add one more, you know, I'm going to add more. But uh, what I like about this, but I definitely like is I haven't seen the PR officially, you know, out. You know, we had these things uh coming out. I mean, that was a nice, key, nice reversal here, pop on the daily chart as well. Uh, definitely, we need to see that that twenty may break, right, in order to reclaim and start going higher. So as long as we don't see that, uh, we must get pullback, which is fine, fine to me. BTA, BTAI, I hope you guys took some profits as well. You know, we, we were on this and I told you guys this might have potential, but as again, you need to understand that whenever you get close to uh, the enter of the gaps, right? Usually the bottom tends to be a strong wall, right? You see here today, BTA went 4.78. We took most of it out. We got earnings closed. So you don't want to hold these stocks forever, right? Uh, you need to take profits. I mean, so compounding is very important. Compounding 5%, 3%, 4% is very, very important, right? You don't be looking out for 20%, 50%, 60%. You don't be looking out for those things because uh, that is being greedy. And in, like, in this market, you cannot be greedy. You are greedy, then you are just going to be losing all the time, right? You are going to actually have, you know, win a trade, but you're going to end up making a loser trade because you're not, you're not locking in your profits, right? One that I'm actually looking, and she's kind of interested to me, is LIFW. They're beginning compliance with the NASDAQ. Uh, they are actually having like a nice pop, which I like. But, oh shit. I would love to see this, you know, breaking $3. I mean, things can get pretty interesting if that really happens. <laughs> MACD daily, the MACD on the daily is flipping up. So that's what I like to see. But since we're on this level of, we definitely want to see about three dollars to continue. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty interesting one, you know. CLS, they got a um. I was looking at this one in the early morning. I believe they got an AKT investment. And they were to $5 per share. And they had a 280. And you know, I like those those uh, those gap up setups, and I'll tell you why, because we tend to have a uh, bullish continuation on these setups, right? It really depends on how how strong they close. You know, this one is closing about a 200 MA, which is good. Right? <laughs> so I'm gonna be looking into this one. Or swing maybe. Uh, Leon is another one that I actually told somebody earlier that I was liking the setup. 
they got our news earlier. Well, I think it was yesterday. They got the top line results from the phase three positive, good data, which is good, right? That data looks crazy. I mean, that data looks actually looks for a for a breakout. Although RSI is kind of high, it's a 91. Uh, the range is crazy. Look at that weekly, man. That weekly is insane. Huge breakout, right? New candle forming above from making new highs. So I think that maybe not this week, maybe next week, we may see be able to see the $6. See, the 300 it makes a 6.87. Last time that it went as high as was a $6. So I think that this has more potential, right? Especially with good data. But a pullback might be needed since uh, the daily RSI is pretty high. But I noticed on the four-hour chart, you know, there's sellers. But the stock keeps consolidating. So I think the longer the consolidates our four dollars is good. So something to keep an eye on that one as well. Uh there are a few setups, you know. We've been trading this, you know, HBC. Again, <clears throat> when those huge sell-offs happen, kind of like kill the momentum, right? And that's why I like to like get in right away, because uh, you know, minion highs, you know, we may get money in this, but I want to chase, you know, this this close below the hundred main, not really liking. See how the Magdi wants to crawl down now. So I definitely want to see clear breakers. I think what else? Um, that was actually like a surprise today. But then on market's not doing much right now. I'll say it's pretty much you know what is volatility ups and downs. You can see this. Those candles on the five minute are crazy, man. Long wigs, long candles. <laughs> this is this is why I don't not sure gamble these things. I mean, if you're scalping like based on the one minute, you, even if you were scalping in the one minute, like you have to cut the exact moment for the trade. And that trade has to be like a minute. One minute trade, two minute trade. So the in and the out is just super 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 quick. That's what is actually scalping. Scalping is, it is complicated, but again, it could be profitable as long as you understand, you know, execution and how, how quick you got to be, right? You cannot just be long with this. A lot of people get into a trade and then, you know, they think, oh, I'm going to hold this for like five minutes, 10 minutes for a bigger gain and ended up losing more because things are not going the way that you want. So I'm actually, I think I'm going to probably, you know, for our, for our challenge account, to be honest, I'm liking CLS. Uh, it's causing a B up, fighting that level. You know, holding that 220 man, just riding that. And again, they do have this AKT investment that kind of like makes me what I'm 190 percent kind of extended. But if the momentum is good, we can do uh 240 percent is the next the next range. So that's that's over three dollars. So I think we have to make the proper problem to break the certainty that the long Mm. What's going on with Apple? <laughs> well, they do have earnings tomorrow. Kind of like I talk, I touched this topic the other day on one of the videos, and I told you guys that Apple might run towards earnings. And I did give you the guys a level. I told you guys that 170.59 resistance was key to in order to go higher. So if you were noting those levels, if you're marking those levels, then you should have then you know get this. I don't trade Apple too often. Uh, but again, based on the levels, uh it's only about execute, right? Today you should see yeah, that nice uptrend. Respecting the 20 May, respecting the 60 May, you know, clear as the water. Again, I didn't trade Apple, but if you were looking at Apple and you do knew our strategy, this was just you know a piece of cake, like literally. 
So you have never broke the 60 minute, 60 minute uptrend in the 20 minute, because you know, work has a nice pullback areas. Very nice trade if you took Apple. But of course, you know, now things are too late. You shouldn't be chasing this. Uh, this is why I say, you know, when you miss a break, then just leave it. Don't chase it. Right. There are times to get into a trade. There are times to not get into a trade. And, and you know, this is not a time. Right. The entry on this should have been like super early. 171s. You know, the retail is here. Maybe 171.59. That was your entry on Apple. But not right now. Mm. I was liking LDX earlier. One of the reasons I like it is because that they do have this gap in like definitely can see this daily have some nice recovery because they have some good news. But they need to break this uh 20 MA. And I'm probably looking to swing this. If, if they do break the 20 minute, I might swing this. Well, that's a nice, nice gap area if we break out. <laughs> IBRX, another one that we trade. You know, I gave you guys a setup. Uh, you should be already super green on this one. You know, I gave you guys the first time when it's three dollars, three fifty four, twice already, forty ish. I mean, it has potential, right? It really has potential, but definitely want to see how it's gonna close. It's having some problems breaking about three fifty, so that's why I don't want you guys to buy right now, because. It can drop, and if it drops, it's gonna go to like 200 May, so 260s, 270s. You can see that low if there's a pullback, right? They are, they are a size as well. It's a, you know, it's a two, it's a eight, almost 80 right now. So it's high. So I, uh, spy seems to break it now, and we're getting to those highs. That long candle. See how scalping will work on this. I'm not doing that, but if, if you were scalping, let's say you're scalping, entry on this spike should have me like a 420s. How do I know this? Because you see, that was the only candle that closed above VWAP. You're 20 million, all your trend lines and above VWAP. That was literally your entry. Break, that was your entry price. Second confirmation here. Third confirmation of the breakout candle. So you got like one, two, three entries of 420s. And this is when you should have take profits because you're on a previous highs, right? That is how you scalp. You know, it's two trade, two three minute trade. And I'm actually surprised right now how SPY is just breaking out. And what I'm really interested in here is on this level, uh, 422.18. Because if we break that one, I think that we can, we can you know get some trade out of this. Like look at a tight look at large time frames. Uh, that for our candle is kind of it's kind of aggressive. But look at the daily though, the daily two hundred mates at twenty four twenty three point fifteen. So that could be a wrench. And look at that breakout right here. Nice breakout. If you want to look for a candle close above. That resistance in order to get a position. Now remember, this is all scalps. I mean, this is you. If you get into this trade once you see the candle close, you wanna get in in, in and out like quick. Mm. Yeah, market seems to push it out. Tesla as well. Nice breaking candle here, and same thing with Tesla. You know, you see this breakout candle here closes above. You might wait for a pullback. And then you can get in into that for some calls. <laughs> but don't get faked out. You know, this is one of the important, the important things that, you know, I show you guys how not to get faked out. This is why you wait for clear breakouts because you can get faked out anytime.
idea that uh, that they're well engaged in, in setting up the deadline, and we'll take it seriously. We'll do that as well. I'll say what what I do expect is that we will we will come to a more consensus driven organization. We'll come to passive things that are broad support. Mm -hmm. broad support. So Tesla, like I said, good time to get some calls. If you're on Tesla, you're looking. I told you guys, look that cat in the clothes. That was your confirmation, right? Well, you see the pullback. Now, keep an eye on the five minute two. Those are huge, huge breakouts on the five minute. But regardless, uh, if you're looking at Tesla, you know, you heard what I said. Once you get the counter close above here, that was his confirmation. So you should have getting like right away. Like you should be in calls on, on, on Tesla. Uh a two or three, that was your first confirmation. You uh, like if you were in at that time, at least right now, you should be 15% out, at least. Because on 423s, you know, 462s, you are almost close to a dollar, you know. So those are just, that's how scalps work. You know, on the range as well, you got to notice how the previous highs is 205.85 on pre-market. But if you do break that, you got the range towards the 200 main. So you got $2 more to go if that actually happens. I'm definitely liking Liam. It just wants to is low for the day tree. That's why I'm not really taking that one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be a strong too. Look at media, man. From lows 414, Aretha's 419. That's a $5 dollar move on Nvidia. But again, notice how it continues to struggle to break that resistance. Like you try how many times today? One, two, three, four times. Can now break out. Here, spy is faking out. That's a that's a reversal sign. So now it seems it's gonna break them. When you see the one minute, when you try one based on the one minute, like I said earlier, you want to look the one minute and the five minute to confirm what's happening on both frames. Don't just go blindly in one stock. Like if you if you in one frame, if you look at the one minute it'll give you the confirmation, then the five minute should be your double check box, right? And why I said is because for example, you see here in spy. You break and then you had a second candle, right? Which you close above. But notice how if you wait for a minute, because this is the one minute, you see how the reversal is happening. But if you look, look at the five minute, notice that it never broke, right? You spike up and then it seems to be forming a fake out, right? So this is what you got to be very careful with those things. You know, to be honest, man, it's really personal opinion, you know, personal risk as well. There's some people that, I know for a fact they will start buying calls here. Uh, they will have all calls earlier too. It's really defensive on people. You know, everybody has a different strategy. That doesn't mean that we are wrong. That doesn't mean that they are wrong. It's just we are trading based on our system, right? And if the system works, then why change? Right? I mean, that's how that's my thinking. I don't change my system because I've been profit the for you know profit the for almost you know three four years so why change it I don't, don't do that but it's looking bullish you know spy is looking bullish you know look at that 30 minute breakout pretty good like I really want to see on spy I think that I think it's gonna top those levels I I believe I said it earlier I just gotta look in the chat but I believe I said it earlier that I was um may say may see that tab I think let me see if I said it or not Oh yeah, see, see, I tell you, I see the upside needs to break for twenty one point three. That was your break. I said it earlier. 
that resistance was key. Mm -hmm. Just it out a little bit, but again, see how this work. One, two, three, two, four, two. That's this is a two minute trade, like literally two minutes. Once a minute, then you're out. I'm not sure spies in the hole. See how it's faking out here. Double, I think this is a well, we can see a double top, clear double top right now. See the first reactions here, second reaction here at 422. You can even make a line. I mean, you want you can make a lines if just to understand what happened, right? I don't keep those lines, it's just you know re for reference, but know how spy you know from a double top. So I will lean in bearish. Like if at this point when you see a pattern that it plays out, if you really want to see confirmation like continuation to the downside. And breaking support, closing below the support, well, you can see I read this for 20 May or 60 May if uh, uh, selling pressure comes. But notice how the buying pressure is for units reducing. So that tells me that there is buyer exhaustion, exhaustion right now. And that could be tricky to play. Although it can, it can continue breaking out, uh, it's just very tricky to play these things right now. Man, I'm tired. Apple too. Seems uh possible double top on Apple as well. If it doesn't break above one seventy three point seventy five, similar situation. Look by exhaustion right now. See how flat the buyer, you know, the bottom bars are. So if we have a surge of bottom and it breaks one seventy three point seventy five, you may be able to scalp some calls. But uh, it's you know, you gotta consider that the setup is there, you know, the double top is there. So that can lead a huge knife. I mean, power should be done in a minute, any minute right now. He usually doesn't talk more than like 40 minutes. But once he's once he's finished, uh, madness is going to go. Like, that's, it has to pick a direction. And that's when people like throw money at like crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm so impressed. I see you had like a nice recovery today. The 76 to 90, so that's a nice recovery. Although I'm not really liking this. Pretty interesting what he does. So you fill the gap, bounce from 20 MA. There's still a gap to fill, which I wonder if they will fill it. Man, I hear him Powell saying like he's waiting for data. He's been waiting for data for so long. I mean, he just kind of trying to tell people like kind of put people like in the blind spot. Like like we already know what's happening. 
they just kind of like delaying the news. But I mean, you got to just be, I don't know, blind to see what's happening in the economy, how things are just crazy high. And even, even, you know, like, you know, housing the interest, I think that's not going to, you know, help anything right now. Things are continue going up. Will continue going up, in my opinion. It's a very bad situation, the one that we are. And especially, like I said, you know, war, war you know, is interesting, fine, you know, like geopolitical issues. Um, I think most of you guys might know, I mean, the war is just getting bad over there. Uh, money is just flowing into there now. So, you know, U.S. is giving money to Israel, I think. Uh, now, I mean, Ukraine war as well. It's just, you know, we have two wars happening in two different places, and U.S. is always, is always involved somehow. So, I mean, I think that pausing interest is not doing anything good. As far as the economy, I'm talking, you know, like a, you know, macroeconomic point point of view. I mean, people want to see a better economy, then I think that race should have been done today. Might have been probably be good for like stocks on the short term, but that probably will have helped, you know, with the situation. But I guess you know they are the experts. So it's a nice breakout on Tesla. Again, if you were on calls, nice move. You know, you got one exit here, second exit at the second breakout. This is when you want to get out. Like if you're on calls on Tesla, you definitely want to get out. Bars are pretty much gone. Selling pressure increasing right now. It's ready to dump. Uh the break breaks 20 mil right now, 203.82. It's gonna retest support probably 60 MA. So that's a nice um that's a nice idea for puts. But so I'm pretty sure it's there, you know. The, the RSI is cooling down. I think we might see like a 40 side RSI. Kind of interesting on this one, double bottom right here. <laughs> Living up. Hmm. 
See that little line that I made? <laughs> I was kind of respecting that little line. It's getting tired and tighter. Man, not much going on really. I'm sitting in my hands. You know, there's like this. I mean, I, I I truly enjoy sitting in my hands. Like I like I notice a lot of you guys early in the morning want to get into trade all the time. So you guys need to change that. And I'm telling you this for good. You want to be in a trade every minute on the on the market, you're gonna lose money. That is not how trading works. You know, trading. The concept of trading is not getting, it's not actually buying and selling uh, stocks. That's that's the wrong mindset. You know, that's that's the actual function of trading. But what it trading is is again waiting for the core, like great setup. You know, waiting for those uh, setups that you're comfortable. You know, based on your TA and research and DD and then execute them. Once you execute them, then you're done. Then you move on to the next one. You take your money and then you walk away. But trying to over trade, right? Being on a trade, getting out, getting in another one, getting out, getting in another one. You know, that's what we're trading. And then that most of the time is going to lead for losses, right? That is the reason why I tell you guys, uh, don't buy certain things because I don't want you to over trade, right? My way of teaching is I'm trying to teach you how I am successful. And if you want to be successful, then definitely you want to wait and be patient. Now, no, there's no swing set up for spy to... I don't swing any options on, on any anything, right? You you shouldn't swing anything on this market, right? Swinging options on this market, you're asking yourself to get stuck and lose money, right? That's the reason why I only day trade options and why I do this is because the volatility in the market is very unstable and you don't want to get stuck on the wrong side of the trade, right? You can buy some calls today, market can close in a good note and overnight the market decides to grab down Market opens, you are down 60% down. Why? Because you hold something that you shouldn't hold, right? The market is not made for swing options. At least this market is not. So you got to recognize this type of price action, right? That is the reason why I don't this. And it's also the reason why if I update certain levels and put a certain time, certain things is because I'm looking for a setup. If I don't post anything, it's because I don't want you to look for those wrong things. So that is everything that I do that is a reason. 
think Powell is done. I believe he's done right now. Yeah, I think so. So we're done. Um, now <clears throat> since we're up trending, as far as uh, we can tell, respecting the twenty MA, you can get some calls. I mean, you gotta manage the risk. Really, it's it's all about managing risk. I personally not trading this. It's up to you. I mean, based on what we know, you know, re you know, respecting the twenty MA, it hasn't broke the trend right now. Uh, five minutes seems to be, you know, get some bombs. Two bars are present, so keep an eye on that. You can give it a try, you know, get some calls, but always keeping your risk management on. And, you know, as long as if you break the 20 May, then you should getting out. But as you can see, bars seems to stepping in right now. So I do think if we break 423, we're gonna go higher. Keep in mind that I mentioned this earlier, and I tell you guys, look, if we bars our strain, we are gonna tap that 200 May, which is literally what we're doing right now. So as I've been talking about, you can always assess things. And I gave you guys this early as well. You know, I put it in the chat. You know, I was looking at for 21 break. So you got to give it, a, you got to always, you know, trades are based on probabilities, right? There is no right or wrong. There's not exact thing. I, I'm doing this and it's going to go the right way. No, I mean, just probabilities. We are just trading on the, the you know, we're thinking that it's going to go our way because we're looking indicators. We're looking, you know, tape. We're looking, you know, all these things that, you know, help us. But uh, overall, there is no, um, exact like it's exact entry for this right people tend to say oh like people try to find like the right like the secret on trading and there is no secret right it's all about taking risk but you want to take risk on putting those probabilities on your favor right again if you if you took some calls that's just a couple of minutes that i said it you should be up already you should really be, you know, be since since you got the first break here then you get some starter position like i told you guys you get a starter you know, you average down on the dips. As long as the 20 minute remains same tag, then you you're okay. It was you know setting your stop loss on the right on the on the places that it should be correctly makes a difference, right? So right now, like I said, every single time when it broke out the first time, as long as the 20 minute was intact, then you should be okay. And and right now again, same thing. You know, the train is good. MACD wants to flip up, so you should be in calls already, right? I told you guys a couple of minutes ago that that was you know you should try giving 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 a shot on the calls. I think that my spot might give a you know a little push here towards the end of the close. We're at three third, we're three twenty five, so ODTs are out of the way. You should know you shouldn't even trade ODTs because ODTs are gone. Like in, they will close in five minutes. They will close it for you if you don't if you don't sell it. The market with the broker will close it for you. So no reason to do that. But as you can see here, we're already up. You know from four twenty two, four twenty threes, you know, at least fifteen twenty percent. So you should be already up on this on this on this uh on this move. And it seems again, once Powell is done, it, I can definitely cool tell that was the direction, right? Respecting the trend. So again, again, don't be greedy. Don't hold this. You know, can happen anything. Pullbacks are gonna happen, right? As you can clearly see here. So lock those five percent, four percent, ten percent. You know, just lock that in. You know, compound gains is the only way to again, really succeed in this market. That's the only thing. I'm, I'm be honest, man. You don't you don't, you don't wanna um look for bigger gains because they're going to happen, you know, here and there sometimes, but I'm looking for uh, home runs every time you're looking on the wrong market because this market is not really for that. They do happen. We, we catch them many times, you know, when, when bigger drops, but we follow our system. So right now, like I said, you know, if you give it a try when I said it, that was your exit. Well, 423, the, the three minute trade, four minute trade, that was it. Uh, if he breaks the 20 minute, then you have to be ready for the pullback. But again, keep in mind that we are only like 30 minutes out of the market right now. So I am not, I'm not taking any trade, just, you know, telling you what's going to happen. I probably going to look something after hours for the challenge account. You know, I tend to see some pops. So what are we keeping it now? And, you know, those penny stocks. Maybe we have a runner on after hours. That is, oh, this is an acquisition. Beat as well. Mentioned it earlier as well. That persistence, that for the 1951 break, that was a key level. You broke. 
should be in cause array is when <coughs> I'm trying to look here. So I gave it to you early at eleven fifty four before I'm known. I'll tell you guys. Keep an eye on that for nineteen four fifty one break for continuation. So it's very importantly for new people, look what I said. My wording is pretty clear. Right? It's all about taking action. You know, I can't buy a cell for you guys. I can't pull my hand through the screen. The only thing I can do is, you know, do the homework for you. I do 80% of the work, put the levels, learn, you know, teach you the way, how to execute, and that's it. Then you only have to do 10% and actually buy and sell it. There's anything you got to do. Respect the levels that I gave you, and then you should be profitable. That's, I mean, it's, it ain't harder than this. I do think people tend to make this more complicated than it is. Trading is not, trading is not complicated. You have a system, you follow the rules, simple, right? That's how trading is. You know, it's like math. So they ain't they they you know one plus one is two. Simple, right? There's no other result. Same thing with trading. You respect the system, that's it. You're gonna you're gonna have two results, good or bad. Simple as that. So you gotta respect what I said. There's a reason why I put those, you know, those days, there's a reason I put those levels, there's a reason I you know do all the TA that I do, all the charting I do. So we are accurate on that our execution. So right now, if you were, if you took that and be a call from four nineteen, you know four twenty two, still up trending, that's three dollar move, right? That was a nice, at least 50 percent gain on this one. Tesla, what did I know? Does the same thing, you know? I tell you guys, look, look that B web break. That B web break, it was gonna retail that resistance. So since then, look exactly what Tesla did. Once he broke B web, when I when I mentioned it, literally did that. Tesla resistance, they pull back. Hold up, broke it again. Once it closed about a 20 and 202, another entry. So understanding why you're taking the trade is very important, right? Or in one, you're getting the trade. Don't just try to follow somebody blindly because it ain't going to help you. And I'm trying to say, and I keep telling people, this is why I am teaching people how to trade, right? Because that way you guys can be profitable and consistent, right? You looking for... Somebody just, you know, walk into their hand, say, you can do this, do this, you know, sell this, buy this, sell this, buy this, like this. I'm telling you, like, you're going to lose more trades than you're going to win because regardless, remember, the person or even myself, if I do this, um, I have to execute my trade. You know, I have to manage my position. I have to manage my own money, right? And doing that is going to have certain, you know, delay, right? Certain seconds, you know, at least going to take me at least 10 seconds, maybe 20 seconds to execute my trade. And you know how 20 seconds can change a lot, right? So this is why it's important to understand why we're taking the trades that we're taking the trades. But not much happening right now. It's 30. I have to go pick up my son. Um, again, I'll be looking. I'll be looking at the market. Maybe we can catch a runner or after hours. I'm just going to keep an eye on it. And we can give it a try. Not on life. We're gonna be from have to go pick up him. But uh, what is he? Meta, Meta. I will. I actually touched Meta last night in last night video, and that I remember saying that the three hundred level is a very strong level. It was because you know three hundred is like a Lega level, but I wanted for people overall look the break of resistance, right? Which I gave it because it was the twenty May, the sixty May, the two hundred May was aligning. So that three hundred seven point thirty was a breakout. Uh. As you can clearly see, that's exactly what happened, right? Once he broke that, you do have a 311 right now since 307. So I definitely wouldn't change this because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, but it's looking bullish. I mean, if the market ends on this bullish, uh, bullish way, I think that maybe tomorrow, what's tomorrow, Thursday? We can have some sort of continuation tomorrow, right? Because notice how stocks are closing at a certain point. They're closing like in between the next resistance, right? Meta is in between right now. So I think could have a continuation towards next resistance tomorrow. The media looked at similar breaking 
the train breaking resistance closing there so it kind of like is gearing up for like continuation pattern right you see buyer buying pressure you increasing in larger time frames uh that kind of like you know tells you something something what says look at the magd look at the buying pressure on, on larger four hour chart so those are the things that you want to keep an eye on it or that's what i actually look on swing trades not on options but on on, on penny stocks you know i look how magd closes you know I look at the buying pressure how it closes so I can I can know that it might be a continuation, right? That's how I actually know these things. I do look on those things. And even a spy, like I said, you know, it, it was being beaten, beaten down for so long. But the fact that it's actually breaking this downtrend and closing how it's closing, you know, with the buying pressure today, it could be likely that tomorrow have another pop, right? And some sort of continuation, right? Not I don't think it's gonna go to 428, but he could definitely do some moves, you know, maybe 425, 426, right? You see how it's closing up on the hourly about it, 200 May. It's also closing about, you know, the support. So those are the details that you want to keep an eye on it, right? And of course, how all how doesn't pre market and after hours, of course, but I'm leaning bullish towards tomorrow. I don't want you to swing anything. I mean, don't take it wrong. I'm, anything can happen. I mean, Something happens overnight, the market goes down, and you know it's not my fault. But I'm definitely looking, look, you know, leaning bullish for tomorrow. I would probably, like I said, try to look more bullish in the morning tomorrow, right? And uh, you know, there's some calls. Again, look how SPY's performance since I told you get some calls, right? Never broke the twenty MA since I told you this. You should be, a, you should already be green on this. You should be already taking profits. So you have those things. But yeah, guys, um, I'm gonna go. Um, I have to go become a son. Again, yeah. just type in the chat. I, I'm gonna be looking. I'm, I might seem we might be able to catch a trade on after hours. If not, I'll do it tomorrow. Uh, what's tomorrow? When's Thursday? Yeah, I should be here tomorrow morning. So I'm probably gonna go live too earlier, in like at maybe 10, 11. You know, I'll try to see if we can catch a trade earlier tomorrow. All right. So well, I, I'll this has been recording. Uh, I'll post it there in the chat. So you guys, you guys can uh review what we talk about it's always good to uh you know review these concepts that we talk every day because the more that you drill these ideas to your mindset it just makes you better right it's like telling you to yourself i'm not gonna overtrade i'm not gonna overtrade every single day kind of like adds up right and then your mind is gonna understand i shouldn't be overtrade you know those things that are really like it's like constant training to yourself right and remember you know trading is psychological if you can have the best ta right you don't you're not okay psychologically you know understanding the concepts you're gonna fail every single time regardless you have the best da regardless you have the best levels if you cannot execute the levels that you're given if you cannot understand why you're doing what you're doing right psychologically you're not okay so you're still gonna fail right so this is why it's important to you know be be focused be disciplined you know respect these things because it's gonna help you in the long run you know and, and that's what we're doing here we're building traders that are gonna be successful but you have to follow the path right you're doing things that are not what I've been teaching you guys. I mean, you're you're free to do it. I mean, you're, you mean you got free will. But, I mean, I guess all of you guys are here for a reason. And I do do my best to teach people the right way. So, I guess you can, I guess you guys can see that and appreciate that. And, like I said, the only wish that I want you guys to be successful and make some money. Right? But, uh, up to you guys. All right? I'll see you guys tomorrow. Right? Take care, guys. <coughs>